Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Neo. In this video, we are getting started with some client work. This is gonna be a watch me work. Um, I am just getting started as usual. I've sprayed down the client's hands with some young male swipe. You can use alcohol or anything, or even water, just something to kind of soften the cuticles a little bit and just helps to disinfect. I'm using this plastic cuticle pusher. It has a rubber piece on the end and then a pointy plastic piece on the other end if you wanna do a little bit of scraping. But I like to use the rubber part. It's a little bit more gentle on clients who might have tougher cuticle areas. Then I'm gonna go in with this pointy diamond bit. I have it at a fairly low speed, basically about three to 5,000 RPM on my e-file. And I'm just going, as you can see, from right to left with um, across the cuticle area, just to scrape up any dead skin, anything sticky that is on that nail plate in that area. We kinda wanna make sure that that area specifically is nice and clean and free of cuticle because we don't want any lifting. Um, and that's usually where it's prone to happen in the back area of the nail. So as you can see, I'm using a very light touch and I'm just getting up any dead skin that's kind of stuck to the nail plate in that area. It takes no time, it's not painful, it shouldn't be painful. And I'm using my Koopa Me file at a very, very low speed. After that, I'm just gonna take a fine sanding band at the same speed on my e-file, and I'm using a very, very light touch to just sur um, surface file the nails. I am just removing the shine and using the sanding band around that cuticle area. If I see any white um, particles around that area, I'm also using the sanding band to kind of clean that up as well. So you also see me going around that same area on the nail to make sure that we get up as much dead skin as possible. So this set is going to be bright and fun as well. I feel like my clients are just tired of it being cold and, and you know, drab. Um, so everyone's coming in and requesting these bright summery sets. So we've got another one happening. I'm starting off with these natural coffin tips. These are tips that I um, saw recommended by D Nail Slayer and I really like them. They are straight, long coffin tips. Um, you can get them in the natural like I'm using now or the clear option. Um, and I'm just making sure to fit every tip to um, this client's nails, making sure they fit from sidewall to sidewall. It is always best to size up and clip down if you need to rather than using a smaller tip. You do not want a surface breakdown. You don't want the tips to kind of squeeze the nail or lift off the nail because they're too small. So just making sure you choose the appropriate size. We are going to go for a medium length today, so I'm not really maintaining much of a coffin shape. I'm just using these tips because they're new and I'm just giving them a try for now. I'm going to apply a small bead of glue, just make sure that uh, we have good adhesion, add additional glue as needed, and then we will get down to clipping and filing to the shape that we want.
So just to make sure that the tips are nice and ready to go, we are just going in lightly with the same sanding band at the same speed, and I'm just using a light touch to blend these tips. I'm not blending them completely smooth. It doesn't really matter to me because I do go in with a clear layer of acrylic anyway, so that kind of helps to smooth out the surface of the nail so I don't get that weird smile line that no one enjoys. But I am just using it to um, give a light smoothing to the, um, the smile line of the tip just so that we can smooth it out just a tiny bit. After that, I'm going to go in with my normal prep system. Same thing that I always do, a thin coat of the Mia Secrets Dehydrator. We just want to make sure that we get rid of any oils or moisture that is on that nail. Um, it's not going to help with acrylic adhering to the nail. Then I'm going to go in with two primers. I like to use a Mia Secret Extra Bond, and then after that dries, go in with a thin coat of the Young Nails Protein Bond. I find that this system works for me. Um, use whatever priming system works for you. Most clients don't have any issues with it in terms of lifting. Um, I find that most of the time, if you do a good application, clients won't get lifting. Um, if they do, it's because um, they might, of their personal life. So like they might wash their hands a lot. Um, I have a lot of clients that are in the medical field. So a lot of them have drier hands. They're often washing their hands or sanitizing, um, wearing gloves, things like that. Some of my clients are really rough. So they might have like trauma. They might like break a fingernail at the gym or like slam a finger in the car or something like that. Or um, it just might be um, from pressure of work. So like I have some clients where it's a specific finger that always gets lifting. And I said today to that client or that day to that client, um, you know, Perhaps it's the way you type. If you use a specific finger all the time, then maybe that's why you get lifting on a certain finger. So don't always um, assume that it might be you or the way that you're prepping the nail. Sometimes it's just life. You know, people use their hands to do so much. These hands, you know, get us through life in so many ways. So we have to have just a little bit of grace, I guess, um, in terms of lifting. If you do a good job prepping the nail, then, you know, the nails are going to last as long as they want to last. And at the end of the day, they're just nails. It's fun. It'll come off and you can just replace it. So like I normally do, I know that was a whole rant, but like I normally do, I'm going in with a thin coat of the Young Nails Core Clear. I am using the uh, Sugar and Cream Monomer. It was just in reach and um, I wasn't really paying attention, but that's what I'm using for a monomer. Um, and I'm using my Young Nails Core Clear. As you can see, I'm not spending too much time. I'm just making sure to give a nice small base layer to each nail. This is what I meant by um, not worrying too much about blending those tips. As you can see, after applying this clear bead of a acrylic we have a nice smooth base to work on and when this client comes back for a redesign and or refill we won't have to go down to the natural nail it'll be protected under this clear acrylic layer after that we are going to get into the design so we actually tried a different design that's as you can see on the pinky and the rest of the nails i was going for a um ink marble um, ombre set um, we ended up not using ink and just going in with the similar colors with acrylic as you can see so I had to just kind of file it down a little bit on that pinky but that is why the rest of the nails have that white gel polish on them halfway we were going to use ink um, alcohol inks to kind of do a liquid marble but I'm just using um, acrylics now we're using a bright yellow uh, I wouldn't say a hot pink, it's a bright pink, like a fuchsia blue toned pink and a white. And um, I'm just, as you can see, using like paint thin, I'm just swirling paint layers on. I'm not applying a lot of product because mostly I just wanna get um, the colors on the nail. We will be clear capping for structure later and I don't wanna build up too much product with this um, portion of the nail. So. Again, I'm using very, very wet beads, as you can see, very, very wet beads. And I'm just kind of swirling in a diagonal motion with these colors, placing them wherever I want to. Nothing crazy. Um, you're gonna see me slowly building up that marble. But yeah, that's why there's white on the nails. We actually tried a different design and didn't like it. So we're just going on with this. And as you can see, I'm just swiping on these acrylics, kind of like paint. I'm not building up any type of structure and I'm just placing the color so that we don't have too much of one color in one area on the nail. I'm gonna be doing the partial um, marbles on all of the nails except for that full ring finger. We're gonna do a full nude nail.
So to tone down these bright colors, we are going in with Fortune Cookie from Sugar and Cream. It is a really, really soft, um, opaque, um, nail plate nude kind of color. I have tons of these. I think it might be a glow in the dark. I'm not entirely sure. If it is, great. If it's not, great. Um, that wasn't the intention, but we always love a glow in the dark set. So I am just using that to place a bead around the cuticle and we are going to be ombreing over that marble that we just placed. On this ring finger, I'm doing a full set, um, a full set, <laughs> a full nail with this fortune cookie color, um, just to kind of give us a little bit of difference with the set. So I'm just doing a full cover of this nail and I didn't even bother taking off that white gel polish. It, you know, gel polish is not a soak off this gel polish that I used. So instead of having to file down that nail that we went already and prepped and everything, I just said, I'm just going to cover it and it totally worked. So that's what's happening. I'm going to be ombreing the rest of the fingers and then this specific finger is going to be a solid nude nail. Once I'm done with the ombre, we have to make sure that these nails have enough structure. So I'm going in with my Young Nails Core Clear and we are going to be clear capping all of the nails. It's clear cap time. And I'm basically building for structure here. So I'm encapsulating that marble that we did. It also wasn't smooth because of the swipes that I did in the different colors with those um, brighter colors for the marble. So also clear capping just helps to smooth out the surface of the nail as well. So I'm just building up for structure, making sure that the apex is in the correct area for this length of nail you don't need too much just because these nails are not significantly long but just making sure that we maintain a beautiful beautiful shape as well
After having gone in with my clear acrylic, I'm using a narrow medium carbide non-safety bit that I got from Amazon. I will link it down below. I'm really enjoying these narrow bits. I'm using a medium just because I felt like I might have to debulk a little bit. Um, some of the nails like this pinky one, as you can see on the left side is a little bit bulky. That's because when I was placing that um, marble uh, underneath that ombre, um, it was a little bit thick. So I'm just using a, a not a thicker, but a tougher grit um, carbide bit just so that I can debulk in the areas that I want to this is not a safety when you're not using a safety bit you want to be careful um, around the skin of your client you don't want it to kind of nick the client um, because you can cut them especially if you're using this at moderately high speeds so if you're someone who's not comfortable with a non-safety just use a safety bit or use a dome bit nothing crazy but I love using these narrow bits I just feel like I have a little bit more control and it just fits you know the, the shape of the nail no one has like jumbo well maybe they do but I don't have any clients that have like the jumbo with nail nail beds. So I just really enjoy the narrow um, carbide bits. I've really, really been enjoying them. So we're just doing a quick surface file. We're smoothing out the surface of the nails. And as you can see, going around that cuticle area, taking my time um, to remove any product that might be touching the skin and to debulk, pushing that apex more towards that free edge so that we have a beautiful structure of each nail.
After that, I'm going in with a 100-100 hand file, 100-100 grit hand file, and just maintaining that nice shape. So we wanted more of a, less of a, in between kind of like a coffin and a tapered square. We don't want a really tight coffin where it does um, taper all the way to that like narrow bit, but we wanted it a little bit more than a tapered square. So um, I don't know what kind of word you would call that, but that's the shape that we're going for for the most part. Um, yeah, I'm just making sure to make sure that I squeeze the client's fingers, especially doing this up and down motion I'm really squeezing it is uncomfortable when your finger kind of wobbles with the file and as you can see I'm pushing the skin away so that we don't um, you know file the skin that can be uncomfortable too and just to make sure that there's no product touching the skin we do not want a surface breakdown but for most part I'm just focusing on getting a nice shape here Once I was happy with that, I'm just gonna go in with a fine buffing block and we are going to buff the nails to make sure we get the ultimate smoothness on each surface. After that, I'm gonna have the client wash her hands. I'm going to also spray her down with swipe again. And this time use a manicure brush to kind of clean up any debris and oil that might be on the nail, even soap residue. Like when you send clients to wash their hands, you don't know if there might be oils or moisturizers in the soap or we know whatever they're using. So I just like to use this this method anyway it helps to um, dehydrate the nail again and to clean up any possible debris by using the um, manicure brush after that we're just gonna go in with a glossy top coat for the most part this set is done we're gonna add one more special feature towards the end but I'm just making sure to give all of the nails a nice coat of this glossy top coat and have her cure for 60 seconds
Next, I'm taking this beautiful white spider gel from Savvy Land. I'm really enjoying this. Um, and I'm using that same cuticle pusher that I used in the beginning. Um, the client actually wanted to take it with her. And when I used it, she was like, wait a minute, what's going to happen to it? But I just wiped it off and gave it back to her. Um, but yes, I'm using the same cuticle pusher. Just anything really to kind of pick up this spider gel. It's uber sticky. And as you can see, I'm just draping it around the finger. So I've used spider gel in the past on my channel. I will link that video for you in the cards um, and I made a mistake and did not clean the client's skin before um, having them cure but I definitely learned from that mistake and didn't do that again so I'm just drawing random wisps around the nail in the same diagonal um, I guess pattern that we did with the marble and that you know bottom left to upper right area um, and yes this is me making sure there's no gel on the skin because I did that before and this is what the set ended up looking like it's super bright and lovely Actually, it kind of reminds me of the colors that I used in a recent video. I will link that in the cards for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like it. Like this video if you do. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.